Ahoy me mateys, Captain Scott here, your SKS video guy, and today we be printing ourselves a batch of TPU Benchy Boats. Oh yeah, ha ha ha. Hello and welcome to my channel. The subject of today's video is, can the Bamboo Lab A1 print TPU? Well, we're going to find out. In this video, we're going to discuss the various brands of TPU, the different colors that they are offered, how they perform, and the pricing. So this all started a few weeks ago, whenever I wanted to print myself a color, multicolor TPU or Benchy Boat, and this time it was Pet G. Now the standard size Benchy Boat is the one you see right here, it's the little guy right here. So I decided, well I wanted bigger than that, so I enlarged the Benchy by 50%. So here you can see that it is quite a bit larger than the original. And I painted it and I printed it using PET G and it came out really nice. I was really happy with that. It's like, okay, well, let's press our luck a little bit more. Let's increase its size to 75%. So here's the 75%. I changed the color orientation of it, kind of a reggae feel to it. And it printed really great again, no stringing, nothing. And so that encouraged me to think, well, what else is there out there? So that's where I started to search for TPU. Now what I did initially is I went up onto Maker's World and I found this preset for TPU by a gentleman named Bjorn B. This is a remix that he did. And he said that these TPU settings work great for him. Like, okay, let's try this. So I downloaded his settings, loaded them up in the machine, and I noticed that his benchy was set at a 45 degree angle on the, on the plate. Okay, I'll leave it at that. So I did increase the TPU, the Benchy boat size to 50%, like I wanted. And then I went in and made sure the settings were the, the same. They, they, his settings were for a P1P, so I altered it over to an A1. I en enlarged the Benchy. And then I went in and made sure that there were no brims, no supports, no prime tower, or anything like that. Then I set the thing up to print his settings. Now I had some... Uh, TPU here, this is an Overture Pink TPU, and I had it left over from a project I was working on during uh, Breast Cancer Awareness, so I fired that off, and it printed very nicely using those settings. And it had a little bit of stringing, but I did go in here with my torch and, you know, torched them all off, and it looks really great. So that encouraged me to see what else I could do. So I then took my standard black TPU that I use, and this is Inland black TPU. Now as you can see there's quite a bit of stringing on here. This is Naga red TPU and I printed that and it came out absolutely flawless. No stringing, nothing. Like wow, that's impressive. So okay, well is that indicative? No it's not. The next one I printed was this one here. This is transparent green. This is also by Inland. So it kind of breaks the theory of is it the Inland brand of black? It's like, hmm, well, how would Naga do the black? So I loaded up the Naga and printed it. And yeah, it stringed pretty good. So the one thing I did do for all the benches here is I took the filament and I loaded it into the dryer and I dried it for seven, eight, nine hours. And then I fed it from the still running dryer right into the printer. Then I printed all these the exact same settings the same way so that they all have an even footing. Well, then, well, let's try changing the setting a little bit to see if I can change that. And then I printed the Nautica boat again, only this time I used the stock setting of Bamboo Lab TPU 95A. And that worked, no strings, perfect. So at that point I thought, well, hey, what else is there out there? So I started buying TPU. Now, this video is not sponsored, so all my opinions are my own. All the filaments I bought with my own money. So I said, well, what else is out there? So one of the filaments that I saw was this one here. This is Hatchbox. Hatchbox Black printed absolutely perfect right out of the box. I was very impressed with that. So what else is there? Well, I went online and I started buying more. This here is CC3D. This is beige. CC3D is basically Amazon's brand. It has a fair amount of stringing in it. Again, 
You go in there with your torch, you can blow that off real easily. But I wanted to show you how much string it had on it. Now, that there, Benchy, the stock settings that was done by Bajoran B. So I've added the Bamboo Lab setting, and it didn't help very much at all. It's, it, it did a little, but not much. Now, I know people say, well, if you can tune your filament, you won't do that. Yeah, I know. This is a fair test for each one with the same setting. So, the next one I printed was this one here. This is Techstone TPU. And this is a like transparent purple-like. Very nice. Very nice indeed. This is Ranke Green. Now this one here is actually 98A and not 95. So it's a little stronger, a little firmer. It's not as squishy. But it too printed very, very nicely. So did this one. This is the Naga White. Okay, the only one that I had a lot of issues with with Naga as far as stringing was was the black for its initial settings and stuff. So, Hatchbox. This here is a pastel green. Super nice. This here is GTEC. This is clear TPU. Super nice. This is transparent yellow. This is by GTEC. No, I'm sorry, Nova Maker makes that one there. Nova Maker also made this orange one right here. Really super nice. Again, no stringing in any of these. Hatchbox Silver here. Very nice, very nice. This is Hatchbox Gold. Again, every single Hatchbox printed perfectly. No stringing whatsoever. GTEx, not bad. It has a real teeny, tiny amount of stringing. Very, very little. For the most part, it is absolutely perfect. This is actually Hatchbox Copper right here, which looks pretty good. Here's Naga Blue. Very nice. Here is Hatchbox Brown or uh, bronze, bronze color, which I thought was pretty neat. A really cool blue is this Peacock Blue by Hatchbox. I like that in a lot. And then there's Naga Gray, which is pretty neat. Now in the transforming color range, here is a Mulin TPU. Now this has a transitional look to it. As you can see, it's a different color by the base down here as it is up to the front. So that's pretty neat how it does changing. So thinking, okay, well, how do we do some color changing? So I did this one here. Now this one here is a simple setting the benchy into the machine and changing the filaments, putting stop motions at a certain point and changing the filament. This is done by with uh, Naga. Now the problem I had with this one here initially was it failed. It stopped just below the, the roof here line. So what I did was I took the model and I sank it down into the print bed to the point of where it failed and I printed just the top part of it. Then I glued it together with some glue that I have called tetrahydrofuron. It's not really glue, it's a solvent and it chemically bonds them together. And at this point you cannot get it apart. It's, it's really good stuff. I really liked it. So what else is there? This is Sane Smart TPU. Its claim to fame is it glows in the dark. Yeah, it's really cool stuff. So it's also expensive too. So those were the ones. And then while I was researching TPU, I came across some other stuff. This is some stuff called by a company in Texas called Dud V2. Now its claim to fame is it is rigid like PLA, but when you print it and you suck it in water afterwards, it gets pliable like TPU. Okay, that sounds interesting to me. It also can be run through the AMS system of the Bamboo Lab. Went, wow, so you potentially could do multicolor printing of TPUs. Okay, so I set the thing up and I dried it like I did everything else. Then I left it cool. I loaded it into the AMS on the A1 and tried printing something using the settings that they had in the box. Failed miserably. It jammed, it did all kinds of stuff. So I wrote the company, said, hey, I'm having trouble with this, and told them I'm using the Bamboo A1 at the AMS light. And they came back and said, oh no, you can't use it in the AMS light. It's meant to be used in the original AMS. 
I said, well, that would have been information I'd like to have known ahead of time before I bought a whole bunch of this stuff. So I said, okay, I have an X1 carbon. So I loaded this stuff up into the X1 carbon. Tried the same thing again. Failed miserably again. I could not get it for the life of me to print anything. After a certain point, it would constantly fail and fail. It kept jamming, jamming, and jamming. So it, I tried everything, tuning it, everything. I couldn't get it to work. So unfortunately, I cannot recommend this stuff here. So, you know, dud V2 is pretty much a dud. I can't recommend this at all. Don't, don't waste your money on that. So, the different makes and models are mind-blowing how much this is. There were 10 different companies I bought from, and they ranged in price from Naga, which is lower-end stuff, about $20. Hatchbox came in at around $31, but it absolutely prints perfect. Nova Maker is inexpensive at $22, and for the most part, it prints reasonably well. Pretty much every single one of these companies printed very well, except for the differences in the stringing. We also had Inland Filament, which came in at $25. We have another one called Techstone. That was the transparent purple that we had here. And that one came in at $22. CC3D was the least expensive one. That's basically Amazon's brand. That came in at $19. Now the Ranky, was $22, that was the green 98. Then G-Tech, that was uh, one of these other ones down here, I forget which one it was, but that in there came in at $22. The most expensive one was the Sane Smart, coming in at $39 for the glow in the dark, but it printed perfectly and it does glow very well if you wanna spend $39. Now, one thing you can do is some of these filaments here are photoreactive. They don't actually glow, but they react to a black light. So if you shine a black light on them, you can see that this particular one right here kind of is shiny here. This one here is the Inland Green, transparent green TPU. We got one down here. This is the Nova Maker Yellow, transparent yellow TPU. That kind of glows in the dark a bit. So some of these will photoreact, mostly the yellow ones. And again, it's hard to see this one here, but it does glow in the dark very well. So fascinating, interesting uh, look into TPU for sure. Now the settings that Bjorn set up was basically this. The nozzle temperature runs in at 240 degrees. The plate is 45C, which I was using a wham-bam board. It has 15% grid sparse infill, and the flow rate is 3.2 millimeters a second. So that's pretty slow. TPU prints very slowly. But if you're patient with it, do maybe a little tuning, you can get it to print very well on the A1. So I was very happy with the way a lot of these benches came out. So the film one I can recommend the most is the Hatchbox. Even though it's one of the most expensive ones there, it printed without any hassles on any of them. Hatchbox was great. Naga is not bad either if you want to go more of a budget. So you can save money doing that. G-Tech did well. Some of the lesser expensive brands all did well. It's just a matter of how much stringy you want to put up with. So that's it for the video. I hope I imparted some information that you can find useful. I hope you liked it all. And until next time, I'm Scott, your SKS video guy, and hey, get out there and print something. Oh, oh, oh you ever wonder why we, we growl so much? It's these hemorrhoids. Oh, oh. All right, that's all you get for today, kitties. Now shell off, you land lovers. Oh, man. Oh, all these hemorrhoids. Oh, jeez. Oh, what's with the... Oh, hey. What's up? I can't see anything with this patch on. What the... Uh.